Good morning. It's mid-September and time for me to go on the first of what may be many uh, fen walks. Fens are unique habitats. The soil is saturated with groundwater. Sometimes the soil is so saturated that the ground actually moves as you walk on it. It also uh, creates special qualities in that soil in that certain only certain plants can really bloom well or thrive well in that. Today I'll be looking for fringe gentian and I'll be looking for grass of Parnassus. I haven't been out here yet this year so I don't know if there's been a really good bloom or if it's been a minimal bloom but I'm guessing I'll find them and uh, when I do I'll try to show you what they look like and I'll also um, try to give you some tips on how I photograph grass of Parnassus and fringe gentian and then of course some of the other wild plants that bloom here in this fen. So join me on the uh, first of what might be several fen walks for this year. From the looks of the paths through the grass here going down right into the fen, other people have been down in here looking for wildflowers too. You never know uh, what you're going to find. Certainly you find lots of bugs, flying insects. We've got a bit of a breeze today so that should make it easier. Um, I do come down here, or when I come down here, oh, I see what they're doing. They're coming down here to get rid of the uh, woody growth. And if you look, you can see some closed gentians or bottle gentians there. That's good, it's being maintained. Uh, when I come down here, I wear knee boots so that I can go into the, the wet environment where the flowers tend to bloom. Oh my, look at this. Folks, we have fringe gentians. We have a number of, number of plants. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is a fringe gentian. Is it not beautiful? All right, I'm gonna set this camera down for just a little bit and get my camera equipment out, my other camera equipment so I can take some pictures. So when I wanna shoot close-ups of wildflowers, or anything for that matter, but when I wanna shoot close-ups or macro type work, I don't use a true macro lens. I use a combination of tools, and my favorite is this um, Canon 500D close-up lens, close-up filter. It screws on the end of a lens, anything, it'll fit on any, it doesn't have to be a Canon. And I, for the, the unfortunate thing is I don't know that Canon still makes these. You might be able to find them, but um, the last time I looked, I couldn't even find them. But it screws on the end of the lens, and uh, I have this one sized for my largest lens, This this 18 to 200. When I use it on this, I'm able to photograph the blossom close with a bit of the background still in the view. When I put it on my 70 to 300, then uh, I'm able to focus more on just the blossom. So I'll, I'll take a couple of pictures here, show you how this looks. And, and then I'll switch my lens to my 70 to 300 so you can get a, a sampling of the difference in view using this on a wide angle lens versus using it on a, a zoom lens. I'm now, I've switched my lens from that 18 to 200 over to this 70 to 300 and I'm going to use that same filter but because this lens size is smaller I'm going to use a step down ring so it screws on the end of the filter Make sure that your threads match up so you don't cross thread it. And then I'll screw that on the end of this lens. And by switching to this lens, uh, using it at its full zoom capability, I'm able to focus very closely with it. And this will let me isolate the blossoms so that I've got just blossoms in the picture and um, very little of the background. It's, it's a pretty interesting inexpensive technique as long as you buy as long as you buy a good filter it's really it really works out quite well so I'll take a few pictures here and show you the differences uh, with this lens and close-up filter versus the wide angle this is a few samples of using that close-up filter on just the blossom with the 70 to 300 millimeter lens Depth of field gets very shallow doing it this way. 
but it allows you to really isolate the blossoms. And even if I increase my or decrease my aperture size for more sharpness uh, because of that close up filter, it still blurs the background nicely. One thing about photographing wildflowers is there are other things to find and to photograph. In this case, over here, there's a garden spider, a real nice looking garden spider. So since I've got the close-up equipment on, I'm gonna take some pictures of that garden spider. And I'll move around taking from the pictures from a couple different directions so that I can include those in my collection for today. Again, using this filter, I'm able to get close and isolate the background. Take advantage of, of photo opportunities when they present themselves. For example, today I came out here looking for this fringe gentian and one other species, but right next to it is this swamp lousewort, was this garden spider. Um, don't limit yourself just to one thing. Expand your horizons while you're out here. Take advantage of the opportunities and, uh, and create those pictures while they're there. Uh, it's not very often I see swamp lousewort, so just as, just as I um, pointed my lens at this fringe gentian, I'm also going to work on this swamp lousewort for a little bit. And if you notice, this swamp lousewort is right here. Behind it, there's a darker spot. I'm going to use that darker spot, that dark shadow, uh, so that it, it makes a nice background that helps this blossom to pop out a little bit. It won't be entirely dark, I don't believe, but it'll be a pretty good, pretty good dark background uh, to help feature this blossom. Without even changing where I'm at, uh, just by looking around, I found we have the fringe gentian here, we have the swamp lousewort, the great blue lobelii, but down here on the, uh, at the ground level, we've got the closed gentian or the bottle gentian. This is pretty difficult to isolate, uh, but I'm still going to shoot pictures of it while it's here. It just shows the benefits of really looking around and don't be in a hurry when you're in a spot. There's, there's often plenty of things to shoot if you just take your time and really look around. I've wandered around now where I photographed the fringe gentian and a number of other uh, wildlife or wild plant species that thrive in this fan type environment. I'm now going to uh, gather up my gear, head to another part of the fan where I hope to find grass of Parnassus. Grass of Parnassus uh, really grows low to the ground compared to, to these plants. Um, if you're not looking, if you're not watching for it, you probably wouldn't even recognize that it's there. But I'll see if I can find some and, and show you the ins and outs of that. Uh, by the way, I, I could wander in here all day, but due to the fragile nature of a fen and the, the plant species that you only find here, uh, at least in our area, I don't want to compromise anything. So I come in, take a few pictures, look around, and then I get out. As I move from the really wet, saturated ground of the, the fan over to another area of the fan, I'm on, walking on the ed outer edges that can can withstand my my presence better. It's actually a more of a prairie habitat and I found three uh, prairie species that you might find interesting. I found, and I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, the giant hyssops. I have found the rough blazing star. And then here we have the blue aster, smooth blue aster. You never really know what you're gonna find when you're walking through a prairie. But I saw this from a distance and I thought, oh, this is great, look at this. There's still some butterfly weed blooming. Even though it's called weed, it's hardly a weed. It's a very desirable wildflower. I walked a bit farther and found an area that's got uh, several partridge pea blossoms blooming.
prairies are ever-changing habitats. Um, it doesn't matter when you come out, there's usually something to find that you can photograph. But the plant species, they, they don't all last all summer or all of the warm weather um, blooming season. For example, this one's well past its prime. It's gone to seed. This is a lead plant. Had I been out here a few weeks ago, this would have been really pretty. But that's all right. They have to go to seed too, and uh, that's what keeps the prairies vibrant and full of diversity. I'm now walking to where I hope to find some grafts of Parnassus. And I tell you what, I don't know, it's early, but it's, um, it's not early, but I'm not seeing, oh, here it is. I have found some grafts of Parnassus. You can see it, it's these little white flowers. I don't know if this camera will focus well, but I will shoot some pictures with my better camera. So yep, we have grafts of Parnassus quite a bit of it right here if you're able to look around in these in this moving video but there's some more blossoms so there's quite a few quite a few grass of Parnassus blossoms because I'm in the swamp and the water I'm gonna have to set this camera down and stop the recording to shoot the pictures but I will share them at the end okay fellow nature lovers I found the grass of Parnassus, several other species, some nice common wildflowers in pretty settings. So with that I'm going to head back to my Jeep, head home and take a look at these pictures on the computer, see if they're what I wanted so I know if I need to come back or not. Obviously this was another good trip out to the fan. But then I can't say that I've ever had a bad trip out here. Sometimes I work a little harder to find things, but boy this year that fan was soaked. I'm glad I had these knee boots on. There have been some years when I got by with just regular old hiking boots, waterproof hiking boots, but it wouldn't have been this year. The grass of Parnassus, they, they apparently don't mind having their roots wet. So at the end of this video, when we wrap everything up, I will share some of the some of the many pictures I shot today. I hope that someday you too get a chance to go out and hike a fan. If you don't, I hope you enjoyed exploring this fan with me. And with that, I thank you for watching.